Josh, this is rather a very interesting uh, initiative, of course, in Kigali, as we're looking at the, cam the government trying to go with uh, low carbon emissions and uh, a, a climate resilient uh, economy by 2050. Uh, rather a very interesting one. But talk to me more on uh, the challenge. What was the initial challenge that brought this whole idea into play? Well, as we know, uh, the world needs to uh, move to low carbon forms of transportation. And the uh, I think there's been, there's been a bit of an assumption worldwide mm. that um, this electric vehicle transition is going to come from rich countries in the West and it's going to be something that starts with middle class and upper class people in Germany and Japan and the United States. But um, we think that's, that's wrong. We mm. think that um, an electric vehicle makes the most sense where you have a high concentration of people uh, using a lot of fuel every day. And here in Kigali, the Motaz uh, drive about 190 kilometers each a day. Uh, fuel is re reasonably expensive. And so we know that we can deliver really big savings for those drivers. Mm. Fuel is reasonably expensive. Of course, we're looking at about $1.60 on uh, fuel today. And maybe that's an exaggeration. But tell me, cars consume more fuel and burn more uh, gases, of course, emission to uh, the atmosphere more than motorcycles. Why motorcycles first? Well, what we were looking for is, a, is an opportunity for a first, kind of a world's first mass market shift to electric vehicles. Mm -hmm. And here in Rwanda, uh, it's more than, more than half of all the vehicles on the road are motorcycle taxis. Mm -hmm. You walk out on the street anywhere in Kigali, you'll see more moto, uh, motorcycle taxis go past you than any, all other, other types of vehicle put together. And I think the, the, uh, even though they have such small engines, they actually produce quite a lot of pollution mm. because they're still very simple. Most of the cars on the road now are made to comply with emission standards in Western countries, but um, the motorcycles that we have here are still relatively basic. Um, still using essentially 1970s, 1980s technology. So basically what you're saying is that uh, with uh, transportation in, uh, you know, if we're looking at our transportation, we, we are emitting more gases than New York because we have about 30,000 uh, motorbikes and New York has only about 13,000 uh, taxi cabs. So is that right? That's right. I mean, New York also has a lot of, lot of other cars, but... But um, I think what we're, what we're saying here is that the motorcycle taxi fleet is so big mm. and it, and it uh, contributes a, a surprising amount of pollution relative to, to cars. So certain gases, uh, carbon monoxide, nitrous oxides, mm. um, and uh, unburnt hydrocarbons like hexane are, are produced many, many times more than a modern car. So on average, about 16 times more for those particular gases. Mm. Uh, and that's what really, uh, that's what's really uh, quite concerning. Let's bring this back to the drivers, the motars, as we like to call them here in Kigali. How does this uh, save them money? Because, I mean, we are looking at uh, going on the grid and then going to renewables, all of this conversation. But I need to know, like, how does this save a more tourist in Kigali? money? So we're looking at a, a saving of up to 50% uh, mm -hmm. relative to current fuel, uh, fuel expenditure. So the motorcycles themselves are cheaper to buy, but they're also much cheaper to run. Um, so an, on average in Kigali, a motor will spend about 2,000 USD a year on, on fuel and oil changes. Uh, with us, they're looking at about $900 uh, on, and there's no oil changes needed. Nine hundred dollars. Uh, is this something that you've actually looked at before to uh, get this estimate, or it's just something that you're doing for the first time and uh, expect to hit that mark? So what we did, we we uh, took several um, actual motorcycles, so motors, asked them to come in in the morning before they started work and emptied all the fuel out of their tank, and then refilled the tank with exactly five liters, mm. and set them up with a GPS and set, and then saw how how far they covered in a day. And that's how we, f we found an average of about uh, 190 kilometers. And that data seems to be corroborated from other, everyone else we check with. Our friends in Kenya uh, also report the, a similar amount of uh, distance every day. And then we look at how much fuel was consumed over that distance. So we, we have a pretty clear idea of how much fuel drivers are consuming in a day and what the fuel economy is. It's about 43 kilometers a liter for, per liter of fuel. Mm. And then we look at our costs for manufacturing the battery and uh, filling it 
filling with electricity, running a charging station network uh, where drivers can come in and swap their batteries rather than having to sit around and wait to recharge. Of course we understand that these are coming in to uh, compete or outcompete those uh, the incumbent 125 cc's or the 150 cc petrol motorcycles. But tell me, with uh, them being uh, with, with them running on electricity, does that mean that we need to get charging ports and more uh, infrastructure? Um, so the, the infrastructure itself is, is relatively simple. Mm. Um, what we will do is set up a number of charging stations around the city of Kigali uh, for a start and then expand beyond uh, into the rest of the country mm. and beyond. Um, and each of these charging stations will, uh, will look and feel to drivers very familiar like a petrol station. So mm. the vehicles themselves are familiar and then the way they get energy uh, is, is about the same. Instead of putting fuel into a tank though, mm. someone uh, comes along, swaps out your battery and, and off they go. So How long does it take to charge? Uh, for us, we'll spend about an hour charging the battery. All right. Uh, there is one question that I got from my technical team and allow me to actually ask you this. Sure. On a day that it rains, do you go out of business? No, no. So in, in Kigali, uh, it's the same as a normal motorcycle uh, normal petrol motorcycles. In fact, it's even more waterproof mm. than, a, than, a, than a conventional motorcycle. I was pretty much looking on the solar beat of it. So, ah. so at, the moment, uh, at the moment, we're planning on actually using the grid. Um, mm. there, is, uh, there is sufficient power for most of the time uh, for, uh, for grid charging. So we're going to be using some solar uh, to, to uh, measure it out. But at the moment, there's, there's generally speaking enough power and especially looking a couple of years ahead when, when we hope to really ramp up. There's plenty of electricity to go around already uh, that's there for the taking. Are these only for commercial or even I can use them on my own? Um, our focus is really on the motorcycle taxis because we can deliver the biggest uh, both environmental impact mm. with about 75% uh, reduction in CO2 emissions, big, uh, big air pollution reductions and the biggest value for the customer. Um, so uh, in, uh, sooner or later we do want to sell to anyone who wants one, All right. but that's, uh, we're, at the moment we're really targeting that, uh, that market. In East Africa as a whole there are about 3 million motorcycle taxis. It's uh, over, over a $5 billion market a year for purchasing motorcycles, service, maintenance and especially fuel. Great. Thank you very much for getting